The tire is certainly one of the most important components on a motorbike when it comes to riding dynamics. Why? Because it connects us directly to the road surface as the crucial link, providing not only the grip we need, but also the necessary stability and feedback. So how exactly is a tire built? What are the differences between them? And how do these differences actually make themselves felt when riding? We'll answer all these questions right now. So how is a tire constructed? Let's take a look here at this cross-section model. What we've got here is a front tire from Conti, the Conti Road, cut open so we can have a look at what's inside. You can clearly see how the individual components work together as a whole to produce exactly the characteristics we want from the tire. We'll talk about those in more detail later on. But first, let's take a closer look at the specific components that make up a tire. We'll start here with the beat. That's the part of the tire that sits inside the rim and basically connects the tire to the rim. Inside, it mainly consists of steel cords that are wound all the way around, ensuring that the tire cannot stretch at this point. Makes perfect sense, of course. Otherwise, there'd be a risk of the tire jumping off the rim, which you obviously don't want. So there needs to be a solid core here that doesn't stretch. And that's achieved by using these steel cords. Embedded within these steel cords begins the carcass. The carcass is essentially the foundation of the tire. It's what the entire tread and everything else are attached to. It determines not only the tire's shape, but also its stiffness and flexibility. Now you can clearly see here how the carcass starts right in the bead and then runs up over the tread all the way to the other side. The carcass itself is mainly made of textile fibers, for example, rayon, Kevlar or polyamide. These are the materials used to form and build the carcass. Depending on the tire type, a belt is then placed over the carcass. The belt serves to reinforce the tread area and to achieve certain performance characteristics. The tread itself is then vulcanized onto this belt. That's the part made of rubber compound that provides the grip you need on the road. It's also given a specific tread pattern to help disperse water and assist with how the rubber compound performs. You can imagine that when a tire is under load, this rubber compound moves slightly over the carcass, which generates heat. That heat warms up the tire, something we actually want, because it brings the rubber compound into its ideal temperature range, where it performs best. That is the basic construction of such a tire. What is also very important is a closer look at the tread itself. The tread is made from different rubber compounds that are applied to the carcass, creating the direct connection to the asphalt. Depending on the rubber compound, the tire's mileage and grip level are determined. Over the past years, different constructions and compositions of this tread have emerged. It is well known that the tread in the center is subject to much more wear during normal road use because we mostly ride straight and only lean the bike to a small percentage of the tire. Therefore, it was said that the tires wear out faster in the middle and so different rubber compounds should be used there. Exactly that has been done. Nowadays, there are so-called multi-compound tires that have different rubber compounds across the width of the tire. Sometimes up to five different compounds are used, but usually there are three. In the center, there is a harder strip, and on the edges, softer compounds. This helps to achieve longer mileage in the center without excessive wear, while providing more grip on the edges when leaning, ultimately improving the overall performance of the tire. Another very important factor when it comes to tires is, of course, the contour. The contour is primarily determined by the carcass and by the way the tread is applied. This is a crucial point for how a tire actually performs. You can imagine, for example, if we look at this radial tire in cross section, there is a huge difference whether it has one shape or another, whether it is quite pointed or very flat. This has a massive influence on how the bike leans and the turning radius, which the motorcycle experiences in combination with the tire. An important point about the contour is not only the construction, but also the air pressure. Because a tire, if we look at it like this, sitting on the rim with the corresponding air pressure inside, does not maintain this exact shape under load. Instead, it flattens at the point where the load is applied. For example, when we are leaning roughly in this area. How much it flattens depends on the substructure, the carcass, 
and also the air pressure. That is why one of the most important points for a tire to work properly is always setting the correct air pressure. Different manufacturers recommend different air pressures and this is because different constructions require different pressures to maintain the shape of the tire even under load. For this reason it is essential and something you should always keep in mind. Always put in the correct air pressure. A small note, especially for track use, is that a very common mistake is thinking that lower air pressure automatically gives better grip. That is not really the case. On the track, you also need to make sure there is enough air pressure to maintain the stability of the tire and its resistance under high loads, which are significantly higher on the track due to higher cornering speeds. If the air pressure is too low, it can actually make things worse instead of better. Every tire requires a certain minimum air pressure to maintain its contour, especially under high demands. Um, another point about the contour is that it also depends on the tire dimension and the rim width it is uh, mounted on. You can imagine that if a tire designed for a specific rim width is mounted on a rim that is too narrow, um, compressing it will completely distort the carefully calculated shape of the tire. The same applies if a tire is too narrow for a rim that is too wide. That is why it is important to check the rim width and make sure it is suitable for the tires. Following the dimensions specified by the motorcycle manufacturer is crucial. It does not make sense to mount wider tires if the rim cannot accommodate them properly because the tire will just curve more and will not actually become wider. Even if the tire is wider, mounting it on the same rim just compresses it. So in the end, the tire is not wider, only more curved. One could talk for hours about all the technology and know-how inside a tire, but I think this gives a good overview of what really matters. I hope this gave you a brief insight into tire technology. Of course, research and development will continue to improve these properties in the future, and much more will be coming. Until then, thank you for watching. I hope to see you next time, and I will just say goodbye.